Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. So right now there is a whole host of drama taking place involving Niji Sanji. Now it all stems from this post made by the independent VTuber Sayu. It contains a twit longer and an accompanying Google Doc which shares the story of the recently terminated streamer Zion. It shares her experience with Niji Sanji amidst of some of her mistakes while she was there, but most importantly details the experience she had with Niji Sanji's management that shines quite the light on them. Now, before we get into the Google Doc, there's three things I need to say. Number one, for legal reasons, Sayu and Zion are not the same person. That is something that the authors of this document will reiterate, but I need to make that clear because it's not something that is officially confirmed, so we have to treat them as separate. Number two, when it comes to the document itself, sharing anything that has a negative connotation attached to Niji Sanji risks a copyright strike on my channel. They have abused the copyright system to flag down other content creators who have spoken or shared negative stories about Niji Sanji. So be aware of that in case anything happens. And for the record, I'm only going to share what is a public document. And I think the only thing that even has an image involving their company will be a single screenshot later in the video. So there's literally nothing to copyright. But the final thing is people on Twitter with their outstanding knowledge of how the law works are claiming that if you share this story you're breaking the law and you're breaking non-disclosure agreements with Niji Sanji and that you're breaking Niji Sanji's rules and that allows them to punish you. Uh, news for them, I don't work for Niji Sanji so their company rules do not apply to me. They also are irrelevant to YouTube's rules and second, I do not have a contract with Niji Sanji. Non-disclosure agreements between Niji Sanji and Zion do not apply to me or any other third parties who did not sign that contract. There's nothing illegal here. I am just sharing a public document and sharing some of the information and some additional context that I think people will find interesting. That's all I have to say about that. So here's the document. It is a rather lengthy one. It is 22 pages. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be as concise as possible and skip over some of the less important sections. So if you want the full details, you can read the document for yourself. It's linked in the description, but I'm going to hit all the important parts for this video. So it begins with this intro saying, before you read the next section, statements and allegations, I ask you to please read everything in this intro portion first. Context for some of the statements made. Several of the allegations written on her termination were due in part to the differences in cultural background between Niji Sanji, an agency based in Japan, and Zion, a streamer catering to a global audience. None of her VODs were privated by her decision. She did not believe in hiding her mistakes in this way and always wished to own up to them. So these two points are important to keep in mind. So this whole cultural difference between Niji Sanji and Zion is important because I think a lot of the rules that she was brought up on violating and some of the alleged misconduct really were reflected by cultural differences between a Japanese company and someone who might not be aware of some of those values as a person catering to a global audience and in particular a Western audience because she was in the English branch of Niji Sanji. And this next point is important too because one of the big things that came up during her suspension and eventual termination was that she was privating a lot of her VODs. She was with the company only roughly a month and she privated over 10 VODs. And people use that as evidence that she was hiding some of her misconduct, but as it turns out, she was not the one who made that decision. It was her management. So this next portion is probably the worst part of the entire document. I think it's very weird and it represents a lot of problems with the Niji Sanji fan base and community, especially in the English speaking portion, where she addresses the Shotokan topic. So one of the things that was brought up during her suspension and termination was that she was a Shotokan and that she made jokes about Shota characters from gacha games like Genshin Impact. So right at the beginning of this huge document that is trying to correct allegations against her, she makes this front and center saying on the Shotokan topic, this was a long running joke stemming from before she was Zion coming from the origins as mainly a Genshin impact streamer. Those who do not play Genshin wouldn't know this, 
but the game ever since its first release units, several of the meta units were characters that had the appearance of young boys. But the main point is that, as a player cares about being able to clear content, Zion would make jokes about wanting these characters because they coincidentally happen to be Shota designs. She is not at all attracted to them in any sexual way and is appalled at the idea. Niji Sanji also never brought this up as an issue throughout the course of her employment, which I think this portion is pretty important because clearly Niji Sanji never had an issue, and it would seem clear if you look at their JP branches and other branches in their entire agency that there's other employees and members of the organization who openly like Lolly and Shota characters and get no flack for it. And, you know, don't even look to someone like Hollow Live where you have members of their agency, including English members, who are open Lollycons and Shotacons and don't get any flack from their agency and don't get any flack really from their community as well. But Niji Sanji EN is a little bit of a different area, okay? A lot of Niji Sanji quote-unquote fans have attacked people like Zion for any sort of inclination that they like Lolly or Shota. And she comes out to say that Zion is, is in no way attracted to them and makes it a really important point in this document. And it just shows some of the differing, differing values between what's important to what Niji Sanji EN is focusing on versus the whole of Niji Sanji and other organizations like Hollow Live. This is an address to aunties, okay? These are the aunties that are attacking Zion for this. And apparently they are loud enough and annoying enough to make this whole section important enough to end up at the beginning of this whole thing. So moving on from that, uh, Zion agreed that separating would be the best for both sides, but the parties were not able to reach an agreement on a joint statement. While attempting to argue for a more peaceful narrative than the termination statement from Niji Sanji wished to make, Zion did get written confirmation that Niji Sanji had no intention at the time of to cut off or discourage her from interacting with or remaining friends with other Niji Sanji livers. She also confirmed that Niji Sanji would not avoid commissioning or working with any creators that work with her in the future. So this, this is a part that is very important and kind of sets the tone for a lot of the things we're going to talk about. So regarding the harassment and doxing Zion has received, she has been doxed down to a home address name and face by those expressing malicious intent. Now this happened when she was initially suspended in February and during her termination as well. This is something I witnessed. I have seen the post. This definitely happened and it happened on a very massive scale. Now what's important is in December, you guys might have remembered that any color and Cover Corp came together in a joint statement saying that they would go after people who were attacking their talents and specifically mention people who were harassing and doxing them, and yet they didn't do anything to back up Zion when this all happened. She said that Niji Sanji did not inform Zion that they would be taking action against the spread of personal identifying information deflammatory misinformation and daily harassment that she received when she was suspended, which obviously uh, quite a bad look. It, it seems like they just kind of left her out to dry because they made this very firm statement that they would go after anyone who's harassing their talents. And you have people spreading very personal information of Zion and Niji Sanji didn't do anything despite making a joint statement with Cover Corp only a few months ago. So I think that is important to keep in mind that clearly there was some sort of a, I don't know, a lack of intent to protect Zion, that there was clearly some sort of a disconnect between her and management. But let's move on to these statements and allegations. So she starts off with this, which I think is pretty funny. I like to preference by saying that I do not want any third parties to use what myself or Zion are about to reveal or twist our words in any way to damage the reputation of Niji Sanji or its livers. Well, their reputation's already pretty bad. But in this video, I am not going to use anything to twist these words. I'm simply sharing and adding some critiques and additional context that'll help people understand because people are interested in what's being said in this document. But um, what she does here is go through all of the various violations. I believe there was 12 
that Zion was cited for when she was terminated. These were the things that any color said she did wrong and they used them as the justification for her termination a few months ago. But here's the thing. As we'll see, a lot of these things are completely blown out of proportion and some of them are just laughably comedic. Like she will admit to making several mistakes and I think Niji Sanji maybe had some rights to take action against her, but really in the whole collective, these things just seem blown completely out of proportion and you'll see why. So starting off with this one right here, this is one of the things that she was cited for using a copyrighted song in her stream without prior authorization. So some people just thought she was playing like, you know, playing some Kanye or something, like some crazy copyrighted songs for no reason. However, as it turns out, that copyrighted song was actually a cover song released by one of her gen mates. And the reason that she played that on stream was to support her gen mate and help spread around the cover song. Her intentions were very clearly good here. Like, yes, that might have been against the rules of Niji Sanji in any color. We got it. But her intentions clearly were good. So using this as a justification for a termination, uh, you know, does it even deserve a mention? This seems like she had a good good idea to help out her gen mate, and she should have probably asked first, but we all know that she wasn't doing anything malicious with this, right? And she apologized for this, too. Keep that in mind. She apologizes for a lot of the mistakes she makes, okay? This one, number two, revealing internal information that can potentially cause issues for stakeholders during her streams. So this has to do with Hogwarts Legacy. So in one of her streams, the alleged mistake here was that Zion stated that they did not have permission that they did have, I'm sorry, they did have permission to play the game at some point. Zion spoke about this like any other game they had gotten confirmed permissions on that was a publicly released game. And this was after staff requested that EN not play the game. Zion recognized that the controversy around this game is a difficult topic. So basically, it sounds like the collective of Niji Sanji had permission to play Hogwarts Legacy, and in fact, some members in the other branches did play Hogwarts Legacy. But it, it appears, according to this document, that the EN branch was not allowed to play the game, and that probably has to do with most of the backlash, almost the entirety of it, stemming from Western audiences. So she, as a result, didn't play the game, but mentioned she had permission, which I guess in the loosest sense, yes, it sounds like Niji Sanji had, in general, permission to stream this game, but the EN branch was discouraged from doing so. And again, keep in mind, she never actually played the game. That's the crazy part. She never actually played it. But moving on from that, I mean, that hardly seems like a reason to terminate someone, right? But they go on to say, making statements that could lead to speculation or leaking of internal information using social media accounts that she personally operates during her activity suspension time. So this is very interesting. So there's two different events cited for this violation. The first one is a lot more, has a lot more meat on its bones. The second one is ridiculous. So during her suspension, Zion went to one of her other accounts on Twitter to browse throughout her timeline and she admits that she made the mistake of liking a random reply that she was browsing through and did unlike it after realizing her mistake. But unfortunately, people screenshotted that and spread it around. And it was disparaging some of her other gen mates. And yes, I think that's a bad look, especially when you're already suspended. The fact that she went to an alternate account to like something that could make uh, some sort of a conflict between her and her gen mates. I understand Niji Sanji in this case being upset about that. Like she is in no way an angel here. Like she's made mistakes. And one thing I, I will say very clear, I don't want to get off onto a tangent here, but clearly like the corporate life in terms of VTubing is not for Zion. Okay. It was never for her. I think she's a good streamer, but I don't think she is really made for the corporate type system, especially Niji Sanji, but that does not absolve Niji Sanji of any mistakes in terms of their management because they have 
shown that they have done a very bad job managing Zion, and it's really exemplified by this next point. So the second example is where Zion's previously owned Discord server admin made a post about how production for mouse pads that were owed to previous Subathon supporters were finally being made. So the reason this happened is because she obviously had a previous indie career, and in the short span between moving on from that career to moving on to Niji Sanji, finally Subathon's uh, mouse pads from her latest Subathon came through, and the people who were owed the mouse pads were getting them finally. And they cited this as some sort of a violation, and the reason they said that is because they believed this showed that she was trying to move on or move back to her former account and that this whole thing involving her past life was showing that she had no signs of remorse for her behavior, which is crazy to me because this is just handling a past responsibility and it's something that one of her admins is posting. They show that they have absolutely no understanding and no appreciation for the situation. This is not her trying to poach back viewers and support. It's just fulfilling an obligation she already owed and she's not even actively involved. This was already in motion before she became Zion. But moving on, this is another part that was heavily cited in her termination. Offensive remarks regarding discrimination and sexual assault. So the main one that everyone focused on was during a stream where she was playing a horror game and at some point there was a character who was sexually assaulted. And she made a joke basically saying that because she was so attractive, she could see why that happened. Okay, people took that edgy joke, yes, an edgy joke, and really ran with it. That was kind of the highlight of her first wave of suspension. People really focused on that joke. And my stance has not changed on that. I think it was just an edgy joke and people took it way too seriously. But here's the thing. She unfortunately came up with this streamer mode thing, like her brain shut off and she was in streamer mode. People are memeing this and I kind of understand why. Like I just own up to the joke. You know, it was an edgy joke, just own up to it. But honestly, like, she apologized for it. I don't really think she she needed to, but I also understand why Niji Sanji might not want their talents making edgier jokes like that. But you could go into other Niji Sanji uh, Wyvers streams and you could find some pretty edgy jokes too. Like, I, I don't think this one really stood out as much as people wanted to act like it did. But the next one had to do with some quote-unquote anti-Semitic jokes, which I find very odd because at one point people wanted to ask her if they could start calling themselves Zionists, obviously based off of her name. And of course she stated that she couldn't do that and was kind of just nervously laughing at the question and then moved on. And for some reason, people thought that was some sort of a remark mocking Jewish people, which is clearly not what she was doing so these two examples are pretty weak i mean it kind of represents this whole document a lot of a lot of nothing it's a, it's a nothing burger it's really just exaggerating some small violations to make them bigger than they seem and here the next couple again i don't want this to drag on all day but there's a couple issues where literally she just had the wrong video description for one of her streams that was considered an infringement. And I, again, I don't really understand. And then there's two different mentions from uh, different accounts. This will be uh, repeated again, where she used a personal account, a past life account, not affiliated with Niji Sanji to play with some of her gen mates in collabs, as well as on some of her personal streams, which I find very odd because it seems like she was given the impression that other livers from her organization could do this. And they had done it without punishment, but for some reason, she was the only one singled out and punished for this. And she once again apologized for this. But again, it wasn't something that she thought was an issue because other streamers from her organization had done so as well. And this whole thing about wanting to pirate games, she mentioned that 
you know, these things exist, but she didn't do it. And she didn't express any intent to use emulators or hacks or anything like that. And again, she recognized that and had no intention of doing those things. But this one right here is like, again, it's just like a, a circus. One of the rules violating saying comments that can be considered offensive to the rights holder of a game during a stream. This is referring to a stream where Zion was playing Uno. Ubisoft's multi-user interfaces results in it being incredibly difficult to change a username. So she criticized the game for not being user-friendly. That was one of the rules violations cited. Was her saying that the interface of this game was not user-friendly. Yeah, talk about a mountain out of a molehill. It's crazy. So this whole thing is very interesting. Again, another mention of Zion using her past life accounts while working on Genshin collabs with her gen mates. And again, she will go on to say that this was something that she thought was okay with the organization. Again, she was singled out and punished for this, but really the fact that she was using a personal account from a past life for collab just because she thought it was easier ridiculous and then this one falsely claiming to have received permission from any color after a viewer commented on zion performing an action prohibited by the rules this may refer to zion opening her youtube memberships after checking that all of her membership perks were within the rulings of niji sanji she had gotten the emotes and badges approved by her manager and thus assumed that as long as her perks were also within the ruling, she could activate them for Christmas for her fans after they had asked. She apologized to staff for not asking for their approval. Again, this is just kind of like a technical thing. It's not that crazy of a thing. But also, this, uh, this is this is the thing that people are memeing on. This is crazy. So number 10, falsely claiming to be sponsored by a brand during a stream. So I'm just gonna skip right to the screenshot. This is the joke. She said that she was sponsored by D's Nuts. That is one of the rules they are citing for her termination. That she was promoting a brand that she was not affiliated with. The D's Nuts brand. Yeah absolute joke like so out of touch either they are just blatantly stupid on this issue or they are trying to actually frame someone as promoting these nuts inappropriately like i could pull up i don't want to get a strike but i could pull up one of her fellow members of niji sanji making the exact same joke where they pretended to be sponsored by a company for the purposes of a joke but clearly like D's nuts. I mean, come on, dude. But again, there's more things. Giving likes to comments that made uh, the company look bad. We get it. And then, of course, they the final ruling they had was numerous other actions and comments infringing on the contracts and rules. Again, just an open-ended thing to make her look bad without citing anything, right? It's just a catch-all phrase. And really, that is all the rule violations explained. Of course, contained within there, there was some real violations, but really it was a nothing burger, right? Just taking small violations and wording them in a way that makes her look terrible. It looks like a war crimes list when this came out for a termination, but we're moving on to the remaining parts of this document. So we understand a lot of what she's saying here. I really want to keep this part brief. Um, it's really describing her personal experience working in Niji Sanji, in particular working with the management, okay? She makes it very clear that she had a great experience with her gen mates and other members of Niji Sanji, and she's not attacking them. She is focusing on some of the mistreatment she received from management. And a lot of this has to do with their lack thereof in terms of management. So, not only just kind of leaving her out to dry when she was doxxed and threatened during both her suspension and termination, but all of this really fueled a lot of her own personal issues. She deals with depression, and obviously all this attention was not helping, and she shared various struggles she was going through in her life during these times, and the management didn't seem to care. So 
Let's go on to the interview. So one of the things people have pointed out is that during her interview with Niji Sanji back in August of last year, she had some very interesting interactions involving payments of her her contract. So going through kind of the, 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 the quick version of this, she was never given a number for her monthly income. She was not going to be on a salary. And she was asked how much money she was making as an independent. And basically they just said, oh, you'll make more here. And that is it. They didn't guarantee anything and really left her on this very unclear path of how she was going to be compensated. And that was made even worse by the fact that during her prep for her debut, she was asked to immediately record a song before she even met her genmates. She didn't even have their parts for this video and hadn't even met them yet. And she was already responsible for getting some audios together for a very important debut song for her generation. And she wanted to at least hear her genmates to get an understanding of what they sounded like for the purposes of the song. But her request for that or any pushback to the deadlines were rejected, even though she was at TwitchCon and had other things going on. But that just kind of gives you an idea of the assembly line of how all this is working and not really paying attention to her needs in the situation. So this is the part that really kind of uh, threw a lot of people for a spin. So when she was organizing her debut, one very important part of debuts, especially with Japanese companies, is your lore and related things like that. The background of your character, what it's all about. Well, as it turns out, she had to literally plan and manage her own debut in lore. So basically, she was the one personally responsible, including financially responsible, for planning her successful debut. She had to write her own lore and find people with the skill sets needed for the graphics and animations. And again, she paid for all of this herself. And by the time she debuted, she was already in the red. She was in the red. That is crazy. Like, this isn't just like indie, like debuting as an indie is like a huge cost already. But debuting as a corporate VTuber is a huge task and it's very costly, very stressful, and a lot of moving parts. And she was responsible for it all out of her own pocket. That's crazy. And finally, after all of that, she meets her fellow livers in her generation, which she says went great and she doesn't want to disparage them in any way. Here's another crazy thing. So in December, she was given a manager. Well, this manager was a two week old hire who clearly did not know what they were doing. So they were hired and trained for a month in November. And this was the person responsible for handling Zion, especially in the times where things really got rough. So in her debut week, she had to private VODs and again, the Genshin situation. And this became quickly very messy where her management had to constantly reach out to her about these personal accounts. But we already kind of went through that with the rules violations that she went over. And you can pause and read these for yourself. It really just kind of repeats what we've already talked about. So moving down the list a bit, there was many other issues with management where there was just confusion as to what was going on. And eventually we reached to the second week after her debut where she's reaching out to her managers and she ends up getting suspended for this. This is the part that is crazy. So she's starting to feel the pressure, right? She already says in here that she suffers from depression and that she was going without meds at this point. And she felt very trapped because she was getting in trouble for some of the things involving using her past life account for Genshin and some of her VODs were being privated and she was getting nervous. She just started, she's only two weeks into her debut and she decides to reach out to management, in particular, some people that she was already familiar with. Well, as it turns out, she got some responses, but she would never speak with these managers again because in a call with her manager and their manager, she was told of her New Year's suspension and that DMing that manager was one of the reasons she was being suspended. And she was completely blacklisted at that point. So 
This is a very interesting section. This New Year suspension that we really didn't know about. She was suspended and essentially they had to craft a plan together. Again, suspended for trying to contact one of her, one of the managers in her organization. To make it clear, it was not her direct manager. It was someone else in the company, which apparently is a no-no within their group. That is, that is what she is being cited for and eventually cited as her suspension. So we get to this New Year's situation. She is getting suspended. So they ask basically, what is your plan? So she told them that her family does anything rarely out of town. So she has to go on a last minute trip. So she came out and said that she was going on a surprise trip and taking a break. As it turns out, that break was a suspension, which is interesting because there has been a lot of uh, schizo posting, to be honest, that a lot of these breaks that Niji Sanji talents take are shadow suspensions. Well, this kind of confirms people's suspicions about that. And it's a pretty crazy section to see. And again, masking these breaks or these suspensions as breaks seems very dishonest. And a lot of people lose trust in people like Niji Sanji when they hear that. Like, how do you trust any of these announcements when they're actively lying about what's going on with one of their talents? Now, it goes on for here. It, it, things are clearly going bad, right? And she tries to lay low, as she said. And she tries to stick to the plan when she returns from that shadow suspension and eventually things keep getting worse and she has some personal life issues where during some of these suspensions and lockouts of her accounts she was having personal issues one involving her cat i i, I won't show the image because i guess it's a trigger warning thing but uh her cat was sick she was very distraught about that but she couldn't even reach out to management and other people because she was locked out of her account and this whole thing honestly it's just a very bad look for Niji Sanji. This is the end of the document. And there is a lot that we went through. I know it's kind of all over the place. But at the end of the day, I kind of hold the same belief as I did earlier. I think that this was a bad match. I think that Zion was not meant to work with Niji Sanji. It was not a good fit for her and her personality. And she did make some mistakes. But mistakes that were largely manageable that there were small mistakes that she apologized and took accountability for and were honestly the reflection of learning experiences from working with this company. And the bigger thing is that Niji Sanji just looks terrible here. They just look like a very disorganized organization that doesn't protect their talents. They leave people out to dry when they're getting doxxed. They don't help them acclimate. The fact that they made her not only work with a two-week experienced manager, but also made her front the costs and effort of setting up her own debut is inexcusable as a big company like that. There is so much to dissect here. It is kind of uh, makes your head spin, but that's going to do it for this video. We've already been over a half an hour, so that is a lot. My voice is literally going to die if we keep going. So again, I try to make this concise, but you see what happens there. But uh, please, uh, if you need to check out the document for yourself, it'll be linked in the description. Share all of your thoughts about this stuff in the comments section down below. And if I get striked, uh, rip bozo, uh, we'll, we'll fight it. But I highly doubt that's going to happen because their reputation is uh, really looking tough. And I don't think they want to be striking people over talking about this document. But that's going to do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.